Welcome to Movie Talk, a weekly show about movies, the people who create them, and the people who star in them. Though he may not seem like a big guy, Danny DeVito is actually several people rolled into one. A dedicated filmmaker, an actor. What do you want? A comic. Just jump on the branch. A humanitarian and soon to be on stage. Danny, whenever I run into you, you seem to be launching into a new adventure, whether it's producing or acting, and now acting on stage. Yes. Now, what is what prompted you to decide that the London theater is awaiting you? Well, I, I like to do lots and lots of stuff, like you say. You know, I don't like to be... Uh, I like to do always have something going on, doing stuff, you know. And so, uh, um, I was approached, asked if I would uh, be interested in doing the Sunshine Boys. And I hadn't been on stage since Cuckoo's Nest in the nineteen in this early seventies um, in New York. I, I did some theater, I did some summer stock and stuff like that. But my main thrust has always been movies and television, and uh, and I just thought it would be really fun to do. It's a, it's a, a wonderful, funny play, and it's it's. Uh, also about that kind of not stopping. It's about a character who wants everything to be as it was and to always keep the ball rolling. And it's really, really funny. I'm going to start rehearsal, and I think in April, we may be opening at the Savoy Theater in uh, in uh, London. And you're not going to affect an English accent, however. It's no, man, I'm from Devito. Wait a minute. You want me to do an English accent? <laughs> Because all those Brits do American accents. Well, he could do whatever he wants. I'm not doing any English accent. Hey, by the way, Peter, how are you today? I like your tie. Get it's away very with that. nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The idea of a London audience and those critics, does that bother you at all? No, no. I like I, I you know this about me. I, I think about what I'm doing. Right now, I'm not, like, concerned about the result. Right. You know? I mean, I want it to be great, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that it's funny and exciting, and I'm really there to entertain that audience. Yeah. And I want uh, I want those people to really have a great time. So, right. And Richard Griffiths is uh, going to be in it with me, He's who's great. a wonderful actor, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited about that. Cuckoo's Nest started such a series of, of extraordinary happenings. Yes, you, events. It was because, like a, yeah. Yeah, because it, of course, there was a movie, a small movie called mm -hmm. Cuckoo's Nest mm -hmm. that I think you had something to do with. I was in there. Boy. Martini. That's right. <laughs> oh, uh, you like to look at other people's cards, do you? Yes. Never seen this one. Come on, Martini. Martini. Martini, will you, will you play a club? Do you think anyone will ever try to remake Cuckoo's Nest? Oh, that would be that would be like you know that'd be tough. That's like remaking uh, any of the classics, like Citizen Kane or That's right. you know uh, movies like that. I think that you you know there may be themes of like uh, people um, uh, put into situations that are like. McMurphy, but I don't think you're, you're ever going to find a, a somebody out there who's going to want to remake it. Hey, kids. How you boys doing? Hey, keep chilling. But think of some of the, the movies that you were involved with creating. I mean, Pulp Fiction, that couldn't be remade. No. No, that's because it's really like uh, Cuckoo's Nest was from the right from Ken Kesey's mind through filtered through uh, uh, Goldman's script and and Milos Forman's uh, direction. I bet a nickel. Dime's the limit, Martini. I bet a dime. This is not a dime, Martini. This is a dime. With Pulp Fiction, uh, Quentin Tarantino is like a singular 
individual. I mean, style-wise, I say that those things happen. Like, you might find a, a movie that is shot like Cuckoo's Nest or it has a feeling of it or the claustrophobia or the, or the, the, the situation or the same thing with, with, uh, with Pulp Fiction. You may find kind of random situations that intertwine and stuff like that, and that's, that's like kind of a, a movie maker's prerogative. Open it. Do you think any of those pictures could have been made today? That's a that's another story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we had a difficult time with Pulp Fiction, even when we made it. Uh, it was a picture that was uh, it was Quentin's really first. He he had done Reservoir Dogs, but hadn't quite gotten the traction uh, yet, and uh, we we tried to get that made at uh, one studio and we couldn't and then we went to Harvey Weinstein and Harvey was a big fan of Quentin's and uh, we made it there but uh, that was a nine million dollar movie yeah and and uh, that was a that was a lot of money Karen look at you hi Martin Mm. Oh, mm. Mm. oh, you smell so good she always smells so good meat <laughs> Martin this is Chili Palmer Chili is it nice to meet you Martin Chili's a gangster. Ran a club I used to play at for another gangster back in Miami. How is Momo these days, anyway? Dead. Bummer. Well, I'll let you get to your movie talk. Chili, do not leave without saying goodbye to me. Yeah. <clears throat> what got into your head? You, you had a good acting career going. Mm -hmm. You were a TV star. What got into your head to start developing movies from scratch? That's such a painful process. It is. After uh, War of the Roses, I guess, Throw Mom from the Train, those movies, uh, uh, for me, I, I saw what was going on in the background, uh, basically, with the studios. And I had a little bit of clout, at, uh, and I, I decided uh, this would be a really good thing because I'm a filmmaker, I love the whole business. I love acting, directing. I love what goes on behind the scenes. Um, maybe, maybe there's a way I can lend my energy to young film, like filmmakers who are, you know, going through exactly what we all go through. And, and, and if there's some person that you can speak to, that could be like the liaison between the, the filmmaker and the studio, that would be really cool. So I, that's what really prompted me to do it. Also, there's a, a kind of a craziness that we were talking about before where I'm, I'm a person who doesn't want to ever, ever stop doing stuff. So, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, hold me down, Pete. <laughs> All right, what's my motivation? Uh, the acquisition of money to collect, to inflict pain if I have to. Guy splits with 15 large of my money, I go after him. What the hell do you think I do? Martin, look at me. I am looking at you. Now look at me the way I'm looking at you. Put it in your eyes. You're mine, asshole, without saying it. Okay. How about this? What are you telling me? That you're sleepy? That you want to go to bed? You and your wife really put together Jersey films. And Jersey made a, uh, really created a lot of extraordinary films. Yes, we had a lot. Of, we had a great run. It was, uh, uh, we did uh, uh, Out of Sight and Get Shorty and uh, Matilda and... Uh, Heron Brockovich, and those also have to be uh, uh, attributed to my partners, um, right. Stacey Scher and Michael, Michael Schamberg. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a team there that, that was working, and we, we did Living Out Loud, which was uh, Richard Grabenez's first movie that I was in with Holly Hunter. And uh, we had a, a kind of a nice um, uh, thing going. There was a cycle then. You were doing pictures one after another that were hilarious. And then... You decided to do Hoffa. Listen to me. Listen to me. I know what that is, baby. You're driving Sig Burns down. Keeps you from falling asleep at a wheel. What got into your head to do what was a difficult yes. biopic, as people right, call it? Right, right. I'll tell you what it was. I was, um, you know, besides the fact that I always like to do stuff, I always like to challenge myself and try different things. Yeah, I've noticed. So... Uh, and without much thought about the consequences or anything, you know, I just, I always think about right now what I'm, what I'm doing at the moment. I don't think about how, well, you know, you're going to go, uh, 
you know, uh, do do uh, this thing and how people are going to think about it. And you've been doing all of, you were doing this kind of movie and why don't you stick in the same mold? You know, I went from Hoffa to, to Matilda. Right. So it's like, you know, we went from one extreme to the other. But the reason, I'll tell you one of the reasons I did Hoffa was that David Mamet's script was so damn good. You, for example, you could uh, cross over and testify for the government. They grant you immunity and let you walk. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing or you wouldn't be here. We got him. And he's going away. Well, if he's going away, I'm going with him. <laughs> you want me to give up Jimmy Hoffa? <laughs> you want me to give up Jimmy Hoffa? <laughs> My character, instance, Bobby Char was a was a, uh, a made up character. He was a compilation of other guys who were, were Hoffa's right hand man. But there were a lot of factual things, and I took a lot of things right from the transcripts of, uh, you know, all those hearings that Hoffa went through, and so. It was a challenge. It was like lots of fun. I got to work with Jack Nicholson. He's my buddy. He's my, my mate. I'm betting you're awake in there. And I had a great time. It doing was it. a hell of a picture, but it was a tough picture. Yeah, it was a tough picture. <laughs> Do I look okay? You look better. Let's put it that way. You know, you know what we have to do, Jules? We gotta work on the way you're walking a little bit. I mean, you look a little stiff, you know? You ever see Frankenstein? I read the book. Now, that's not gonna help, you see? When you walk, you gotta walk like you're moving to music. You know, and I don't mean a military march. I mean, like, you know, Aretha Franklin and Otis Redding and Wilson Pickett, a couple of white people. Like you know? this? Yeah, wow, that's it. Yeah, loose. Now, you've done some interesting Schwarzenegger co-productions. Yes. Twins. Twins was lots of fun. He was a, very successful. Beautiful, and beautiful. Right. Junior, we had a great time doing Junior. Yeah, yeah he's a, he's a, uh, we had a lot of fun because he is like a, he's like a C-stand. You know, you got these sentry stands that you put lights on. He's like this big, sturdy thing that I can run around like a bumblebee and like sting in the back of the head, you know, or <laughs> go here and go... I feel like he's a good guy to be around in comedy. Sorry, I tore your shirt, Vincent. I don't know what happened. Sorry. Julius. What? What are you, are you allergic to something? No. Don't wear these bumps all over your body. I mean, you're all swelled up. You look like you're ready to explode. <laughs> yeah, put this shirt on. There are women and children present. In your back. It's worse than the front. Now, both of you, though, have very strong political views. And I've had my arguments with Arnold yeah. about politics. Yeah. But you're a, a card-carrying Democrat. Oh, absolutely. He's, a, he's, a, he's an idiot. <laughs> oh, no. After he gave that speech for George Bush at the convention, I almost, like, just, I wanted to kill him. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Look what happened. Yeah. Huh? That's right. I mean, come on. We're talking about... Uh, no, he had his head screwed on wrong in a couple of places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Need I say more? But... A great guy to work with. I mean, I've done I a couple pictures. I love working. I work with him again. Yeah. And he comes through. He I want to work with he him. He does what he promises. Oh man, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's he's a. I would I would work with Arnold in a snap. All right, back off, me creep. Just back off. Oh, oh, I'm the creep, huh? Well, at least I'm honest. I'm stealing this stone. I'm not trying to romance it out from under her. Well, wait a minute. Now, going for the stone was my idea. Ah, that's what all the good con artists want you to think. He made you think you needed it, you sap. Get in and drive. Come on, move it, move it. There are certain characters like Nicholson, mm -hmm. Michael Douglas, and yes. even Arnold, yes. who recur through your life and yes. your career. So let, let's start with, with Michael. Yes. You actually were sort of roommates at yes. the beginning, right? 1960, and, I think, in the mid-60s, we were at the Eugene O'Neill Foundation, Waterford, Connecticut, the Playwrights Conference, which right. is a wonderful organization. It gives young player, you new plays, and also other play, you know, first time playwrights or whatever. You get to read the plays with the actors. We were up there for the summer. We did a lot of fun stuff together. It was the '60s, you know. My hair was down to here, Pete. I had hair, you know, all over. And 
Michael was a cool guy. In those and Michael days. was, a, what are you talking? He was like at UCSB. I mean, yeah. you couldn't get any more hippie than that. We had a ball yeah. up there. Next thing you know, we're sharing an apartment in New York. Uh, you know, um, and then and then from one thing led to another, and he was instrumental in getting me uh, the movie of Cuckoo's Nest. I did the play, uh, but uh, that was like the that pushed us out into the yeah. And the whole story about Michael once explained on our show is how the tension between him and his dad, Kirk, as to who who really owned and controlled that play. Yeah. And it's interesting, you look back at these two people, what they're doing today. Now, Michael Douglas, a gutsy guy, is doing Liberace. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think it's his a party was born to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, you know, very, he's like, you know, Liberace. I mean, come on, like, I tell you right now, I mean, Michael's got a lot of guts. That's I mean, right. he's got a lot of chutzpah, and God bless him, he's doing really good now, by the way, after yeah, all of that which stuff. Is great. What are you laughing at, Martini? You're not an idiot? Huh? You're not a goddamn loony now, boy? You're a fisherman? <laughs> uh, huh? Now, Nicholson, such a different yeah. character. Yeah. Now, your life with Jack spanned, again, uh, several very different kinds of movies. Yes, we, we, we did uh, uh, several movies together, which uh, I'm really happy about. You want a cup of coffee? There's a camaraderie. First of all, the guy's a Jersey guy. I'm from New Jersey. Yeah. We had a lot in common. You know, uh, he's um, he's just a giving, really wonderful person. We had a great time. We and did. as he says, I'm sort of a low life Irish guy from Jersey. Yeah, he is. He's a, he's like a you know a big 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 present from Nicholson is I I brought him up a. a, a, a Pork roll from New Jersey. We used to eat it with with heart with a with a Kaiser roll and that. And my mouth is watered with mustard and lettuce. <laughs> that was it. That was like one of the big big presents that you could get Jack. Like for yeah, anything that would remind them of. I sent him a picture of the hospital we both were born in, like an old photograph of this hospital in New Jersey in Neptune that I found. Right. You know, he's really a sentimental guy and a really good guy. Okay, uh, what are you, I, I... Question, what are they doing here? <laughs> and, uh, follow up if I may, what are you doing here? Okay, well after the incident last night, we found one of your socks and came here to return it. But when we got what? here, you were asleep. Ew. Exactly, and sleeping is the body's way of telling other people to go away. I know, but you looked so cozy. Dr. Seuss, what Dr. what got you and meshed to Dr. Seuss? Well, the thing is, uh, I'm a big fan of Dr. Seuss. I always have been from the with my kids. You know, I read read all the books. You know, uh, my favorite is Horton Hears a Who. Uh, you know, Green Eggs and Ham. You know, this one, that, and the other thing. Uh, the Lorax is one of my f all all time favorite books. It's a it's a fantastic read. If you have kids, you should definitely get the book and, and take a look at it. The movie is going to be spectacular. It comes out on the 2nd of March. It's an animated movie. It's an animated movie. I play the voice of the Lorax. Uh, about that, uh, actually, um, I put your bed in the water. <laughs> and the idea is that the Lorax speaks for the trees. Right. The trees have no voice, but the Lorax speaks for them. And he tells the onceler who's chopping them all down that he should be thinking about the future. It's a fun story. Yeah. Now, does this suggest that most trees came from New Jersey then? Yeah, all New Jersey trees, by the way. <laughs> right. Dr. Seuss might have been from New Jersey. Right. I thought you were from New Jersey, right? No, I'm You're not. not. I'm You're a not? Manhattan brat. You're from Manhattan, yeah. but you spent a lot of time in New Jersey. <laughs> not if I could help it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Did I set myself up for that one? <laughs> no, 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 Time out. Back up. Stop. Don't move an inch. Nobody's moving in here. You gotta go. Goodbye. So who invited the giant furry peanut? You calling me a peanut, huh? I'll go right up your nose. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You wouldn't hit a woman. Who? That's a woman? Now, in terms of what you've done in the past, did, are there any pictures that you've been involved in that you would like to start over and... Redo, redo again from no, the No, no. You know what it is? It's like once it's like your children. Yeah. They, they're your kids. I, I, I know it's a metaphor that probably you've heard before, but 
I, I really feel like, you know, you embrace them, you give them all the love you can, you know that, you know, and you put every ounce of energy into them and they go off into the world and they exist. Yeah. And that's the way my films, I feel like my movies are. I just finished the movie. I shot in 17 days uh, down at a little hospital here in town. And we're in Hollywood. And uh, uh, the, uh, it was a wonderful experience with uh, Lance Reddick, from the guy from The Wire, you know, Lance oh, Reddick, and uh, Bill Fickner mm -hmm. and Constance Zimmer. Mm -hmm. And I just directed this movie I'm editing now. I'm very excited about so it's it. It's an independent it's movie an independent in the classic movie. sense. Right? Independent movie in the classic sense. But don't you find it's increasingly tough to get distribution yes. for independent movies? Yes. So what are you going to do with I this? Well, what the th I think one of the key things is to lower the cost of the movie. Yeah. Because you know you're you have a you have a, it's like a shirt, it's like a jacket. You know if that jacket is like made out of a certain material and it took so many hours to make you got to figure out how you're going to maybe take that jacket and sell it. If I put a price tag on it for that's way out of line, you know, you go to Sundance, you go to all these places, and people say, okay, well, they buy the movie for like $3 million, and then it grosses $900,000. I mean, that's not a good business. You know, you see, the idea is to try to figure out how to make the movies uh, for less money. You are voice an animated picture. Yes. You're going to be on stage in London. That's right. You've just finished directing a picture. Yes. Again, this is like DeVito is always and, uh, having and, uh, a renaissance. And it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Goes comes That's back. Right. Uh, uh, in uh, we we start shooting in uh, in July for our uh, eighth season. And it looks like you've had a good time with that for what, six years, seven seven years. We've done. We're on the air, and uh, we're starting our eighth year. We're going to do nine. And what is there left to do? that you haven't done in the entertainment media that you'd still like to do? I'd like to run a studio someday. Right. Not the kind of studio that you're accustomed to. Right. A different kind of studio. Which is one that makes... For sensible movies for a reasonable... really good movies for a reasonable price mm -hmm. and turns a profit. Mm -hmm. That would be a unique entity today. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, a delight as oh, always, always to talk to always you. Always really. great to talk to you. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.